All right, hey, welcome everyone. James Hurst with The Marketing Show. We can kick it off here. Hope everyone's excited to have a chance to visit with Sean Clark. I just uh, messaged him and he is on his way. So uh, if you guys are tuning in, tell me where you're com coming from. And uh, if you're here for the replay, type replay. But if you're here for live, type live in the, in the chat. Um, definitely looking forward to answering any of your guys' questions as well with all of this. And right now we'll just be... Um, I'm going to check the audio, make sure everything's good on YouTube. Looks like that is good. And then let me check the stream over on Facebook as well. All right. Let's see here. Looks like we are live on Facebook. Jenna, what's up? She's live. She's live. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be monitoring comments both in Facebook and um youtube so just drop your comments and looks like sean is here so let me assign him here and here we are hey, hey. there we yes, go so i just uh, got done welcoming everybody we're live on youtube and facebook in the marketing show so woohoo yeah well, well, awesome let me go grab my coffee <laughs> <I'm not laughs> <doing>. all right <laughs> sounds good Yes, I love dashing All out right. the live wall. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> what? Say, say that. Say that again. Oh, I said I love dashing out on the live call. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. So we've got some people tuning in. We got Baton Rouge. We got Kansas City live from Miami. Stacy, Derek, uh, Jenna. So we got people. I'm sure as it gets going, we'll get more people. But yeah, drop your comments below, guys. So yeah, let's just do a little quick recap here. So probably what three and three and a half years ago, I'm I'm sending Sean my first DM. I'm like, I'm big. I'm kind of over in the ClickFunnels world. I keep on hearing good things about high level. You know, I'm a software engineer and, by trade, and so when I saw essentially what was those release notes, I mean, basically those Loom videos are they're just. Yeah. I'm like, this actually feels really. Um, that actually feels really normal. You have enhancements. You have bug. You don't hide from your bugs, right? You you just nope. every every week you just have releases. There's no uh, once a year big surprise of and it, and it just it just felt kind of like home. Um, and I guess I, I'm I'm sure I'm few, one of a hundreds that got a private uh, you know d high level demo from you. But I, I imagine you're not doing too many of those these days. Or, or are I you mean, still, do you, you still depends, do some, right? I, I, yeah. Honestly, honestly I, I still get on as many customer calls as possible. Um, that's you know, amazing. With a guy that's so, yeah. Love yeah. it. I mean, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't you know, I've, you know, I haven't tried to change my, you know, my perspective. I'm certain that I have probably, I probably ne definitely do less now than before, but I certainly don't try it. Yeah. I mean, and it is phenomenal how far, uh, you know, the product has come since then. Um, I mean, it's yeah amazing and last time we had you on the marketing show do you remember what we talked about probably not but it was oh, estimates <laughs> estimates and proposals <laughs> yeah so last time we had you on a couple months ago was uh, a sneak peek of estimates and proposals and they're and they're oh, finally yeah. out yeah. right so they are um, yeah, that's right that's right right now how is the how's the adoption of that going i know it's always you know uh exciting but uh, are, you, are you seeing lots of them being created and then Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, 100%. Yeah. So, awesome. I mean, what we always find, right, is, you know, if you ask people like, well, what, what do you want to see, right? People say, oh, I want to see, you know, a million, do zillion things. And so we always put those down and we roadmap it that way and all that wonderful stuff. But when it comes out, you really find that people actually, um, a lot of people, when they first see it, they think, oh, actually, you know, it turns out I can use exactly this first version. So yeah. we find that people's adoption rates are much higher than they even they would expect. Um, and so, yeah, we've got a really good adoption so far out of the gate and we and just, I mean, we'll continue, continue to, add. but the other thing is, the other thing is we just don't even think about this as like, this is like the beginning, not the end, right? So it's like, hey, we're gonna have a hundred more features here. I mean, we just launched communities uh, a little yeah. while ago and now had two subsequent releases, which has added a ton of features. So, you know, it's just, that's just hitting so, along that line and just doing more. Yes, perfect. So, and then how about the balance of like, uh, you know, so let's say the, I mean, I know you guys put, you put things in labs, right? Uh, and then you let people kind of pound on it that way. That's great. So I just wanted to comment quickly on on the thumbnail for this live, right? It was uh, it was you and I sitting down to dinner, and and we have you know here I'd gotten my VIP ticket 
Little did I know that I would, you know, my VIP ticket to the uh, to the high level summit in Dallas a, about a year ago, that I would bump into you, and I was just like, "Hey, do you have somewhere? To, do you have somewhere to sit?" And so, yeah, we grabbed we grabbed dinner, snapped a picture. It was a great conversation, a great event, and now we're just what uh, a month away from doing it again, right? I know it's going to be awesome. Be awesome. Um, yeah. Apparently, I have an echo, so apologize to the people who oh. say I've got an echo because I don't have a fancy mic. I'm just, uh -oh. I'm talking to my Mac. Hello, Mac. It works great on everything else. So sorry to hear okay. that there's an echo. But oh, uh, I do, I do see, I do see some. Uh, yeah, some. Yeah, guys, drop your comments. Uh, drop your comments in the chat here. <coughs> or drop your questions, I should say. Yeah. Let me see if I can hook up my sham wow mic. Just a sec. Okay. Maybe this will make things better. And let me see. I was monitoring YouTube for comments. Where do I? Let me see if I can get my comments up for. Um, okay. Let's see. How about now? What's up? What's I wonder up, if that's What's any better. Mark? James, your audio doesn't echo. Okay. Cool. How about now? Any yeah, better? Let us, yeah, let us know, guys. James, can uh, you hear me any differently? Uh, yeah, I think it's good. Let's see. Keep talking. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Good. Okay. Well, wow. I, th I, I know that this mic is so good that I can have a like a, a locomotive going by, and it's so loud that I can't hear anything someone is telling me. But I can, they'll hear me perfectly and they can't hear the locomotive. So it doesn't get much better than this. I'm getting some comments that it's better. So I think we're good to go. Perfect. All right. Keep rocking. All right. So, okay. Let's also talk about like the premise of this call, guys, is if, as you've seen, is we want to talk about like what are the best practices? What are the commonalities of what has Sean seen from his perspective? All, it, it, it is a unique perspective. He obviously doesn't have inside perspective on all the top agency's day-to-day -day process. He probably has some. And so the premise of this call was, can we distill some of the principles, the commonalities in the top 1% of high-level agencies? What do they, what do they look like? What are they, what are they, uh, what are they doing in the marketplace? Um, and speaking of which, congratulations on the, uh, the Inc. 5000, you know, making the high level themselves on the, on that list. But I can tell that you're more proud of the fact that, that what that yeah you oh, i was gonna say james you know me well yeah. because I, I could give yeah. a darn as to whether or not we're on that list i care that our customers are on that list so i think it was you know our our customers didn't call us to tell us this we just found them randomly so i think last check it was five but they were looking for more i haven't gotten a recent update since last week i was i was actually technic technically out of the office i was on a i was on a floating uh, on a floating office um, yeah and uh but uh, uh, but that was super cool, right? And I, I guarantee you we're at least off by another five. But the fact of the matter is, there's at least five level high five high level customers on the Inc. Five Thousand in their own right. And to me, that's incredible. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I mean, we're talking about people. That, I mean, so the you know the, some people that are not familiar with the Inc. Five Thousand. Like, oh, is it fastest growing? Well, I grew from you know. Uh, you know, 10,000 to 20,000, you know, you have to have, there's like a minute, I think it's minimum 3 million uh, a year. Yeah. And then, it, and then, and it's all like, it's all vetted by CPAs. Like it's, it's on the up and up. It's not some, it's not some, yeah, you know, they, they've been around for a really long time. Yeah, and it's, you know, like a lot of these things, it's, you know, they're it, it essentially, yeah, you still have to apply for it, this and that, but you have to submit financials and you're still yeah. in competition with everybody else. And a lot of people really want these things because they're, they're really good for, you know, let's say you want to grow race funding. You know, I hate to, I hate to, to admit this, but it's, it's true. You know, saying I'm on the Inc. 5,000 helps you raise funding more than not right. things like that. But the more important thing is it, it, it these are real businesses and the great thing is it really proves out the model the saspreneur model is the model that those businesses that are listed on there are following and that's how they're able to scale that's how they're able to create those get to those revenue levels um and they're not traditional agencies they are definitely following that saspreneur model all of them to a t love it love it so okay um yeah we got Estimates, proposals out, social, recurring social posting, custom fields. You guys are just continuing to do what you do, which is why you guys are growing like crazy. I just saw Robin's post in the group. You guys have like a hundred positions you're trying to fill. A lot of them in in uh, all over the world, India, Mexico, remote. Um, so yep, we're okay, all remote. So We've been remote since pre-COVID, so we're, we, yeah. we love it. 
Okay, so for me, when I think of some of the top agencies, I could be wrong, but let maybe fill in the blanks for me. I, I'm thinking of like I think you know Julie Chanel, uh, you know uh, Stock, you know Stockton Walbeck with Course Creator Pro and all them, um, Josh Nelson, Seven Figure Agency, um, James you Bonavise. Will better than me, most likely. Uh, yeah. And I can neither confirm nor deny because one of the things I will say is unless people give me permission to talk about their growth or their agencies, I never do. Uh, just because I really, I get, I, I'm lucky enough that sometimes people will tell me some really good, honest feedback. And so I will, um, I'll always take that sort of, it, it, even if they don't say anything, I sort of defaultly take it in confidence. And then if they say, oh no, you can share. I always say, I say, you know, why don't you share that with the group? And if they're willing to do that on their own, I feel like it's better that they even say it in their own words. Cause in very people have really good questions like well, wait a second what's your offer and how are you doing this and what niche do you have and this and that and so yeah. i feel like it's better that they they say that stuff anyways because they can answer the questions i can so speaking of that what you talk about their their offer and the, in the niche i i um i think the classic niching down strategy is uh to an industry right so you have like dar holdsworth yes. with yes. with uh with chiropractors you have uh julie chanel she has like kind of gone after the what would you call it? The course creators, the, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I was yeah. curious, have you seen, how many have, have you seen kind of slice it a different way? Like, a, like going after like what we, you know, miss call text back or the chat widget or some other way of slicing uh, down the Yes. Niche. Okay. So I think the most important message I'd like to deliver on this is you're sort of like talking about Michael Jordan and, you know, Kobe Bryant or, you know, you know, like really, I'm mean, going to rest in peace there. I apologize, but um, I'm just trying to think of top basketball players, but you're really talking about the top end of the top end, right? Uh, of folks. And I think the problem is that when you listen to those things, that sounds exciting, but the, I will say the most consistent money makers is always on the local side. So when they slice it, they slice it local, they slice it. I, and literally, I mean, local, local, I walk out my front door, I join the chamber of commerce. I do a free marketing presentation to the, to the I become a member. It's very cheap. I do a presentation to the chamber of commerce and I'm selling a very small feature set. Yeah. I have my leading offer. Maybe it's missed text back, you know, uh, web chat widget, GMB chat, text to pay, something like that. But I'm really, in terms of fo getting a, a footprint underneath me, I'm getting a hundred local clients. That's my first goal. Because I know that if I don't do that, I can't really go any bigger than that. And if I do that, I'll have a really great financial base on which to grow my, my SaaS business, my SaaS business. And so fundamentally, if you're listening to this and you don't have a hundred clients, don't pay attention to the Julie Chanel's. Don't pay attention to the Josh Dustin's. Don't pay attention to any of those folks. I mean, they're great. You, should, you can know about them and all of that, but please don't try to ape their business models because you got to get to the hundred first before we even start talking talking about national strategies and scale of that level. What you're saying is the way that the way we talk about slicing it is more actually geographic, like uh, to your to your own or someone else, you know, someone's. Well, yeah, because account. I mean, think, uh, if you think about our, our offering, right, I think every I would just go out on a limb and say every small business and I'll just speak for the country I stand in in the United States today should have um, some set of the features that high level offers, period. So now from there, it's just a sales question. and. People who you're selling to are predominantly local businesses. They operate local, they think local, they act local, and thusly, they wanna buy from local because that's how they think and they come to the world. So a huge advantage to people, and you can see this across many other, like I noticed the HVAC people. They don't go to the national trade show every year to get their vendor for their HVAC equipment. They have a local rep that comes by, or the dentist, they have a van that drives up every day and delivers supplies to them. The local television station sells commercials with a local sales force, on and on and on and on. Why is that? It's because it creates trust in this way that is just impossible to replicate. Um, and so you need to walk out your front door and you need to meet the local businesses in your local area. And it's the simple fact that you can say, hey, wasn't that crazy weather we had last week? Or, hey, did you see that the such and such just happened? Or so-and-so was going to come to town or this and that? Creates amazing amounts of trust in a way that you just can't replicate over a Zoom call, over a webinar, or anything like that. So if you are getting started, you need to start local. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I have heard you talk about that before. And I think that uh, the other thing that I'll, similar to this question was like, you know, the existing following, right? Like uh, some of these other bigger people, like they, they had already, you know, they had brought over an existing following. That's a, that's a distinct advantage, right? I mean, that a lot of, maybe a lot of us, uh, you know, don't have necessarily. How would you, um, what would you say is like, you know, there's so many people starting out. They they see the promise of the business model. Where uh, what you talked about that you talked about the hundred client threshold. 
Yeah. yeah. What percentage would you say uh, out there are below that versus above that? If you can, if you can just kind of. Oh, I'd say 80, 20, 80 below, 20 above. above. Yeah. Um, so we're, um, a lot of people are still, just, yeah. I, I remember going to the SaaSpreneur conference and people raised their hand. They said, how many of you have, you know, your first client and, and five or 10 clients. And, and uh, there was, it seemed like there's a lot of us that are still trying to get this thing off the, off the ground. Yep. That's actually why we put together the five day challenge. I just dropped in the guest chat. I don't know if anybody can see oh. it, but basically if you go to go high level.com and then it's like the number five dash day dash challenge, we have this five day challenge essentially where what we've realized is that if we get you to get to your first client, you'll make a lot of money. And what most people don't realize is how simple it is because the problem I get every day is like, well, and I see this already in the chat, like, Ooh, when is this feature going to come out? What about that feature? What about that feature? What about that feature? And, and a lot of times I'll say, I'll get in, I'll get on calls with the people like, Oh, cool. That sounds exciting. I can't wait to get that feature. But by the way, while we're talking, how many clients do you have? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't have any yet. Like, wait, yeah. what do you mean you don't have any clients yet? Oh, well, because I've pinned my hope that if only this one, this one feature is, yeah. is created, all things will fall into my lap. And it's just like, that's total, utter nonsense. If you're yeah. an advanced user, you have 100 clients, you have 20 clients, you have 30 clients. Cool, let's talk features till the cows come home. But if you haven't made a sale, stop. You don't need any more features. Go make a sale. We have hundreds right. of them. There's no excuse currently for you not to be being successful. Yeah, I can relate to that as well. I. I kind of have, I have, so I have my own SaaS clients. I don't have a lot. Uh, and then obviously with the YouTube channel, this is more, you know, of an affi affiliate play, right? And then I also do consulting. And so part of my job has been to really know the tool inside and out. Uh, yeah, you're a, technical, not, you're a technical yeah. person, which I think is great, right? You, you understand how to use the ins and outs of the system like nobody I know. Um, but I think for most people, when I look at their journey, they'll come in and say, okay, how do I learn everything about the tool? And I'm like, stop right there. Learn nothing about the tool. Go make a sale first and then call me because I can help with that problem. Help. I mean, I had a woman stand up at our last entrepreneur conference and she said, I have never logged in, but I sold five people. Can you help me? And the answer was like, That's... heck yes, you're like my dream, right? <laughs> um, being able to make the sale is the number one thing that people um, have trouble with. And actually the reason they're simple, they don't think to do it. They think that there's this barrier in front of them called learn everything about the tool and then I can make the sale. And that's nonsense. You literally just pick one feature, think missed call tax back, think, uh, you know, whatever. And ultimately you can, you can go out and make the sale on missed call tax back all day long. And then once you do, you're, you're good to go. Like then you can learn more heck, or you can hire even better. You don't have to learn anything. I talked to a guy today. He, he just sells all day long and has somebody else do the work. It doesn't matter, but figure out how you're going to make the sale first. That's the number one thing you need to focus on. Fred Scaff says he's just signed two more this morning. So I'd love to hear more about that, Fred. That's nice great. Job. Uh, Mark Wiggers says different personality types might make oh, yeah. an easy sale or be a nerd like me that feel like they need to know it. You're speaking to me. <laughs> exactly. And the, the problem with that though is, and, and here's why I, I reinforce that message because fundamentally you, you don't want to go six months paying us only to find you have no customers and no revenue. Like you're just kidding yourself. You're just putting your own, that's your own mental block that you put in place. You need to burn that. You need to burn the ships there and go make it happen. If you're not out talking to at least one business a day, you're making a big mistake. You got to get out there and it's going to be painful at first. It's going to be hard. It's, it's going to take time, this and that. But at the end of the day, it's really simple. All of the technology that we're creating for Hyrule will be used by small businesses, period, full stop. They're, it's going to get sold to them by somebody. It's either you or somebody else. You have to choose who that that's going to be because it's not a platform that we designed for sale to the small business. We designed it for sale to you. And the reason is really simple because we know when it comes down to it, I don't care if this is the, if this is a big name system, like think of every, any software provider you run into the day, think about a POS system at a coffee shop or something. There's no reason that fundamentally eventually won't be you because even that coffee shop is going to be like, Oh no, we have this issue or this question, or we'd like to do more. They need you to be that linchpin between them and the technology. Technology because they're sitting there serving coffee all day and making bagels and this and that, right? They need you and you're going to make them more successful if you make that sale and they're going to be way happier with the experience. So fundamentally, you got to realize though, it's about first making that sale, getting that revenue, creating that stable base, and then growing from there. You can always learn more technical stuff as you move along. Yeah, I love that. So I know you, uh, even at the Sasspreneur conference, they talked about the Trojan horse. Have you been following that idea too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. the Trojan horse. So for those that remember that, you know, like basically it's your, your kind of your lead, your foot in the door offer. Um, 
Missed Call Text Bag was kind of our, the favorite one, right? But A2P is kind of uh, throwing a little bit of a, a wrench in there. Do, what? Yeah. Any ideas of what? I, mean, I think uh, that's pretty, pretty easy to adapt to, though. I mean, so if you think about it, just go register. All you got to do is prove to people something, right? Go register a number. Go use it for in that area. I mean, again, start with my local strategy. Use the area code that you're local to. Get an A2P registration done on your own behalf. Show them the power of that, and then just roll them to their own number. Be like, oh yeah, it's a three-day setup period. And ultimately, what you'll find is that today, there, if you get into the pending status, you will continue to operate even past the deadline. I got this news actually from the CEO of Twilio himself um, this last weekend. I emailed him on Friday night and I said, hey, um, this deadline's coming up. What's the deal? And he emailed me back and said, if you get into pending status, you won't get shut down. And then very quickly, it'll get through this big mass load anyways. It'll be a three-day period and life will go on. So ultimately, I don't think that this call text back as a, as a sales construct and as a real reality is, is fundamentally going to get deterred by A2P. A2P, again, in my opinion, big mental block because everyone is going to have to do this and as a result there's this massive rush up front to make it happen and then once it's done it's going to be like oh well that's just of course that's how it works and you can start with your own test number essentially your own demo number to prove the value and then roll them into their own account i see so you would have your own sub account have your number already approved and you would use that as kind of the demo yeah, yeah, just run it for a week. I mean, again, it just, hey, here's the thing. I'll, um, I'm, and it should make your life so much easier. Hey, I'm just going to show you the value of this. Um, you know, and this is how you tie up the sales period. You say, listen, I'm going to put you on the miscall text back system for three days. And let's take a look at it and review it after three days and see how it goes. And then we can flip you to your own unique number. How's that sound? I see. Oh, great. You're, cool. you're talking about taking my number and actually forwarding yeah. it to that local business. I see. Gotcha. Absolutely. So, and you could do this five across if you want. You get five numbers, five sub accounts. I mean, you could just pre prep a lot of this stuff. And then again, you just roll them over to their own stuff. And then of course there's other lead ons that you can that you can do. Put the web chat widget on the website and say, look, I'm gonna just get you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get you more customers without any ad spend, okay? And you put the web chat widget on the website, you turn on the GMB chat, and what happens? Well, lo and behold, people go to their website every day, they're already not getting help, they don't know what to do, the websites are confusing, they click the web chat widget, they register, and guess what? Voila, that's a free lead you just got them, congratulations. And now all they gotta do, you gotta say, hey, listen, look, we capture these leads, we need to text them out, and then in a minute here, and a minute being uh, the, the end of this month, we'll have the new live AI bot also enabled that will have the ability to do a lot of the lead nurturing on site. So there's just some massive, massive upgrades and some good foots in the door coming right around the corner. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I, I, one of my questions I have thought about was, you know, isn't the, like the dream is that you have this beautiful uh, SaaS, you know, website, like let's say FG funnels for lack of a better example, and that, yeah. and that you yeah. could, you could run ads and you could, and people would, you know, you'd have blogs and people affiliates talking about you, and that, and people would come to your website and and just sign up, right? That's like yep. I think that's the yep. dream world that, that we have, yeah. um, and it's and it's possible. I mean, that's amazing that someone can sign up, put their credit card in, it kicks off a a new sub account. They they check their email and their and the sub accounts being provisioned in the background, um, but sounds like that's really. Um, that's not really the, the place to put the focus on because having a high converting I mean, that's, SaaS that's website. That's level two, right? Level that's level two. two. Yeah, and, and again, you know, let's just look at high level as an example, okay? So when we first started out, if you go back in, I don't know, like uh, the, the web archives, you'll see that we once had a very expensive 10 page website with beautiful designs, this and that. And I got exactly zero signups on that website ever. Uh, and then we, we totally trash can the thing and you replaced it with a really ugly funnel. Um, and then that, that, that has subsequently gotten a, a lot, a little nicer. Um, and we've gotten all of our signups there. And why is that? It's because people don't often come to a website and become convinced and I think this is like a misnomer. I think people look at other people's websites and think, well, this is what creates all of the amazing magic. And it's like, no, that's that's actually totally wrong. In fact, if anything, again, it's level two, but your affiliate comment is way better, which is if you have somebody out in the world talking about your SaaS, really promoting your SaaS, and then getting people to go to your website, that's going to create some signups. Not, not just having a great website. In fact, great tends to also mean voluminous, confusing, um, uh, you know, full, full of um, easy places for me to click around and get trapped and not know what the heck you do. And then finally, just abandon because I didn't take action. But I'll sure say it's nice. It's just yeah. I'm so nice I didn't bother to sign up. So you got to be careful. Nice websites tend to be also websites that nobody uses. 
Yep. I, I, I thought that's what you might say. Uh, because, and yeah, converting on a cold, you know, converting on cold traffic, uh, onto a, to a SaaS, you know, website, um, you know, seems like it could be a tall, a tall order, uh, on the topic of affiliates, um, you guys have your own affiliate manager software and I was just curious, do you, um, have you, do you have any sense of, are people using your guys' internal software? to create an army of affiliates to, to promote people's SaaS. Tons of, tons of them. Are you kidding me? I mean, okay. uh, and, and by the way, not just SaaS, but also local businesses. So this is the other thing that people seem to misunderstand. If you want to, here's another great way to get customers for your customers, run affiliate campaigns. And what do I mean by that? Yeah, hey, I got a med spa. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run a group ha- Groupon style campaign. I'm going to go out to the existing customers of the med spa. I'm going to offer them the ability to sell their friends a hundred dollar med spa um, gift card. And for every hundred dollars, they're going to get 50 50 bucks um, in their pocket for doing so. So what happened? You targeted people who use med spas. In fact, they use that med spa because they've used it before. Now they're going to send out to their friends and who do, who do they know? That's right. Other people like them. Wow. Targeting. It, it, it's almost like you didn't need a pixel for that. So you'll have people who know people like them who target that people who use med spas. They love it because they li- already like you. You're, uh, people are motivated by money. So you, you give them the ability to send out a gift card and bam, they made 50 bucks ahead and you brought in uh, a new customer for the med spa. And again, their cost of service, even if they break even on that first service, who cares? They now have a new customer. And by the way, that technique rolls on. That next customer through the door is the next affiliate they can upsell to. So we have tons of people doing that. Um, And personally, I think that is the best way to grow any small business, bar none, on the planet. Love it. Okay, so we have, uh, we talked about the SaaS website versus the affiliate. We talked about foot in the door strategy. Um, okay. Just a quick question. Personally, if you yeah. have just, if you're, if you're, um, offering just a few of those things, uh, yep. and kind of, you know, there's the little bit of the overwhelm with all of the, all of the menus and stuff that, like the SAS configurator, yep. I'm sure you guys have probably got this on your list. Um, but is, are there, is there going to be a way to just say only these five things I want to show up? They'll it seems be like now, continued enhance. There'll be continued enhancements there, but I want to be really careful. If you let people, they would do really stupid things. They would say, I'm going to sell a website for a dollar a month. And everyone's like, isn't that a beautiful idea? Because, you know, it's just a dollar and it's just a website. Wow, what a great idea. Until you sell a thousand of those people, a thousand of those, and people will call up and be like, how do I do this? And how do I do this? And how do I do this? And fine, you know, let me give you a cheaper example or an easier example. You'll say, oh, no, 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 that's, I get that, Sean. I'm not an idiot. I'd use the web chat widget. And then they'd be like, okay, but now where are my leads? And how do I report them? And how do I get back to them? And how do I do this? And how do I do that? And all of a sudden, you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm getting $1,000 a month, period, for supporting all these people. And now I'm broke. Uh oh, now what? I have to go back to these people and actually charge them real money shoot now they're gonna be angry with me because i went from a buck to 97 dollars. gosh that was that was kind of dumb but it's too late because i've gotten myself in such a terrible hole that i can't dig myself out that's the problem i have seen hundreds of times and i have personally done myself in my last business i charged so little that i was the only employee because of not because i'm an amazing person but because i'm an idiot because i couldn't afford to hire anybody i couldn't afford to bring anybody on to help me and i just sat there and eventually I coded myself um, to a point where I couldn't code anymore because I was just Mr. Customer Service. I had a thousand, I had a thousand small business clients and all I did is answer uh, tickets all day long and it sucked. Um, and it was fundamentally because I didn't charge enough. So I refuse to let anybody make that mistake. Now, should you use a simple set of features? Absolutely. But you should also do enough features to create enough value. See, there's a, there's a mix. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, I know there's like a minimum feature set and then minimum, you know, minimum price. Um, yeah. okay. So that's, that's cool. So, although we did, by the way, um, to your point, just so you know, in labs today, I haven't dropped this um, video yet, but there's a brand new SAS configurator, uh, that just went live that, uh, re- that does have some really good upgrades. Uh, and also, uh, you can, you can set different rebuilding markups for each plan. Now you can set different trial periods for each plan. You can give one time non recurring complimentary credits now. So there's a lot of really cool upgrades on that one. Love it. Uh, any, any word on, uh, multiple brands is that, or is that maybe down the road? Oh, uh, that's going to be a Q4 thing, uh, for thing. sure. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, multiple brands again, back to perception reality. Ooh, I know if I just had plumber soft and lawyer soft and doctor soft, oh, I'd be a, mi- a billionaire and I'd sell those thousands of accounts. Yeah. Right. I mean, again, how many accounts do you have right now? Oh, I have zero. 
Uh, yeah. no, don't no, hold no, your no. breath for that multiple brand. Yeah. You... yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll have it because, and, and, but I'll just, I promise you now the 10 people who really take advantage of that to any real extent are already well above hundred accounts for all of you who are not there. Don't think about it. Stop. You're making a huge mistake. Again, you're thinking, well, if only I had a brand for this and a brand for that, sell to hundred local gonna, businesses, gonna, right? That's not going to fix, please, your, fix please. your problem. Yeah, let's yeah. let's let's take a look here at the, some of the comments. Uh, we'll give we'll give a one little feature request. He is asking, uh, what's the timeline for automated payments to your affiliates? Uh, oh, let's see. Is that that's Q4? We have automated. It's it's so ironic because it, I used to do all the payouts to affiliates myself personally, and I hated the idea of automated um, uh, 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 payments. It's like, oh, ten thousand dollars just went out the door. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. I think there might be an error. Oh, too late. Ten thousand bucks. All gone. Right. Can't do it back. I used to love to. I would download that CSV. I'd pop it open. I'd run my eyeballs over it, and I'd be like, okay, does anything look funny here? And sure enough, sometimes I would catch things. But um, and then I, and then but then if not, I just drag and drop it to mass PayPal mass payments and hit send. It took me sixty seconds. But d don't worry, we'll have that out this quarter. Though is second tier affiliate commissions and coupon codes for identifying affiliates. So instead of just having links, you'll also be able to offer coupon codes, and those coupon codes will identify that person as your affiliate. Okay, so it's coming, guys. Like. Like uh, like a lot of the things, uh, but I like that focus on, you know, depend. Are you a hundred above or a hundred and below? What's your what's your focus yeah, going to be? Yeah. And we'll have some, and, you know some things that I think are going to be more impactful is like tap to pay. I think should be out in the next two weeks. That'll be way more impactful for the average local business. Uh, being able to collect payments is important. We already know lots of businesses do that. We've now moved tap to pay to the phone, so you don't need an actual reader anymore. Um, and again, yes, that feature exists in other platforms, but who the heck cares? Now it exists in yours. Um, we'll also have um, e-com coming out in Q3 with, or in, at Level Up Day, which is going to be awesome. So now you'll be able to actually do full e-com and replace Shopify for most people. Um, you have things like, well, obviously, communities just came out. You'll have the AI stuff. The AI bots, I think, are going to be huge. Um, those will be right. that'll be a massive success. So there's lots of these really cool, impactful features because again, how many small businesses have a full AI bot that they can use to actually talk to their clients? Zero, pretty much. And they're going to need this because in the future, we're, I, I'm telling you, we're all going to talk to AI bots, whether we like it or not, for almost all of our starter interactions because they're now sufficiently good that they can actually answer most of our questions. And most businesses are going to utilize that technology in order to lower labor costs and fundamentally right. enhance and increase their top line because, and we're actually going to like it as consumers because at five o'clock when the dentist is closed and we're like, crap, we need to get an appointment. We're going to, we're going to love the fact that we can chat back and forth with something that, you know, can ask us whatever questions they need to ask in order to get us a booked appointment. Oh, who's your insurance provider? This and that. Right. And eventually we'll actually book an appointment. We're like, thank God I needed to get in tomorrow and I can versus crap. Now I gotta call the yeah, I got to call the next dentist to, to pick up. Yeah, that's I definitely see that on, on the trends as well. Everyone's going to be jumping on that. Um, okay, I had one. I think I, just yeah, let's cruise through this here. So, um, so let's rewind a little bit here. And I was at Sasperneur conference, and they said like it seems like those that have you know that have been doing this a while, like there there's a learning curve. It took their time to kind of get their footing. Uh, but back in the day, there wasn't SAS mode. Right. Nope. And uh, uh, tell us about that. Tell us the story about how people kind of created SAS mode. They took the API keys and they started. Uh, what happened there? What was the how did you guys? Oh, I, I mean, this I mean, I just like every good idea ever. I, I've totally just stolen this from customers. Right. So literally um, all of you know, we're customer obsessed, customer driven. You know, the ideas list, you know, all of these things. But really it was I, every time I get on the phone with somebody to help them, I sort of trade. I'm like, I'll help you, but you need to help me. I want to learn more about your business. I want to understand how you're being successful. And I would just get on call after call after call. And, and the stories would either be, oh, I'm a lead gen agency and I have churn like you wouldn't believe. Um, I, I'm a local agency um, and I have no churn, but I'm, I'm my growth is stuck because I, I've sold marketing to all my local businesses and now I can't you know I can't do any more for them um, and then I started getting on calls with people who would say oh no we're selling high level um, as a monthly recurring service and I would say as a SaaS company and they were like a what they didn't know what that was but you know, and, and and you know at first I just sort of brushed it off and 
over time, I'd start asking better questions like, well, how much are you charging? And how many client, get, how many accounts do you have in this and that? And I would find people have like hundreds of accounts. And I'm like, holy crap, what do you mean? And then we had some a customer go out and win like um, a platform of the year in their in the VRBO space um, doing this. And so it just really started to kindle that fire. And over time, at first it was sort of like, okay, well, let's kind of see where this goes. But man, it's just amazing. So like future casting on this, I see zero reason why all of you cannot compete with any small business and medium business software platform on the planet. Like that is exactly how I feel. Like you walk in to any company at all, and eventually I'm talking even POS systems down the road, you walk into any business, anytime, anywhere, and you're like, what do you, what do you use? Okay, cool. I can beat the features on that. I can beat the pricing on that. Oh, and by the way, if you have a problem, I'll actually show up and help you with that. How's that sound? And boom, I think we'll wipe out most of the other small business and medium business software platforms platforms out, out there just on this basis alone. So, so you, that you have unlimited sub accounts on the, on the 297 yep. Plan, yep. And, then, right. and you have API key that was, uh, and so someone said, wow, if I can like, uh, get my developer or some tech guy to, uh, you know, take the name and the email and then automatically create this account. And you guys took that idea and ran with it. And now you've started yep. to explode the feature set of, you know, upgrades, downgrades, um, SAS mode rebilling, right? Yep. So I think okay. it's fair to say that I think it's fair to say that a lot of the top agencies, uh, top you know agencies in on high level are on the four ninety seven plan. What would you say are the most compelling reasons why someone would consider upgrading if if it's if the time is right for them? Yeah. So when you so there's this point where you can automate the billing to a great extent, but I, yeah. I, there's two a couple things. One, you're not you're not making a markup on the SMS and the email. And B, um, ultimately, there's always going to just be invariably some issues like somebody's account, like their credit card balances or something like that. And you've got to follow up with them. And, you know, you want to pause their account, kick them out and get them a repay, all of that. All of those mechanics are built into the 497 plan. And if you think about it, at some point, it's just like, gosh, is $200 a month worth my, you know, like, am I spending more than $200 worth of my right. time? Yeah, yes or no. And you'll cross that threshold at some point. And when you do, you'll upgrade and you'll get a truckload of, of time back. And it's just a time to value equation for you. Okay. So if it makes, if you have, so I think I had probably like three or four clients at the time. Once about, about the time I was breaking even, I didn't want to pay for their, I didn't want to foot the bill for, um, someone else's texts and emails. I wanted to make money on that, even if it wasn't a huge markup. So let's see here. So we have, I think some of the top reasons to upgrade is also the automated uh, user provisioning, right? You have to go in there and, and tweak the settings for each individual user. And then obviously you talked about the, the, um, the, there's also split testing. There's also the markup. So, um, and to your point on the rebilling, I was actually in a client's account that wasn't doing the rebilling. And there was a little notice in there. It said, uh, hey, you know, you could be making, uh, on average, it's, it's about $363 per month that yep. you're, but that's assuming that you have the clients to support to support that. You know I, I mean, mean? Honestly, yeah. honestly, it only takes a couple. I, I think vast, the vast majority of people with um, a markup that's still less than what you would get in a competing product, you will make more than the $200 extra we charge. Right. So you guys, uh, I, I'm, like I said, I'm, I have the SaaS program. I'm also one of the affiliates right, with high level. I've been helping people out with the YouTube channel, the the bounty hunters. I probably help hundreds to thousands between those two things. And if you guys are okay with it, I'd like to uh, present like my upgrade offer uh, to kind of round out what high level is going to give you. And then I'm going to add mine as well on top. So let me just share my screen here. And so this is uh, the offer I've been making. I've actually been having quite a few people take me up on it. I'm I'm going to be offering some one-on-one -on -one calls as well with this. So let's just recap here uh, what we talked about. When the time is right, if it makes sense. Like if you're still on your first five clients, you know, focus on that and go out and knock your local doors and get that taken care of. We talked about the first three. There's also split testing, agent reporting, two to 10x rebilling of SMS, email, and content AI. We didn't really talk about all the other things that they're adding work uh, uh, up upsells to. The Eliza booking bot. And then you, this is what now does unlock the API key. You want to connect to Zapier, Make, Pabli. Uh, you get the API key on the 497 plan. Sure. Now, sure. over the sure. last, sure. yeah, over the last few years, I have built out some of my own snapshots, and I've started 
co uh, curating my own um, SAS Pro uh, members area, right? So if you were to upgrade with me and they're letting me do uh, like a one-time discount, it's basically $200 off It's or essentially a free trial. So if you wanted to try the Pro plan for free uh, for one month and then after that it would, re it would uh, recur at the normal rate, you would get with me smarter review request snapshot. That's how you would get, uh, as you get more five-star reviews. I have a snapshot that people use a lot of in the seven figure agency. Uh, my appointment reminder snapshot I built out, uh, a support, a basic support portal. I'm still hoping that high level will, uh, come and give us those objects where we can, you know, the, I think it's coming the tickets and things like well, that. Uh, but, but also don't, don't, don't discount communities, James. That's right. That's right. I could be that's, in the community that's, right that's, now that's, asking you support questions and you could be responding to them. True. Uh, and they so could be have, out there for everyone else to see. So in the future, if so I have that yeah, question like a, publicly available, wink, right. wink, nod, nod. Uh, continuing that, I, I had an SMS chat booking bot. It's really cool. It's super fun. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of hanging. I'm kind of holding my breath for the AI stuff as well. Uh, you do get private Facebook group. And then I also, uh, I have this, uh, on like a GHL sub account onboarding checklist. And then here is the, um, the SAS pro trainings that I've been curating and putting together for you. Uh, for, and then also we didn't talk too much about it, but the local, anybody who does get, uh, on the 497 does get the snapshot, the local hero playbook. Uh, I know that, uh, Paulson and chase have put a lot of work into, into that. So let's see. So yeah, anybody who is interested in that, you can go to James, uh, gohighlevel.com, uh, James-Hurst, or you can, you can just leave a comment on the YouTube video, leave a comment on the Facebook group, just you can, we can DM me. For anybody that does choose to sign up uh, from now until the end of August, I'm gonna throw in an additional, on top of everything, this is no extra char charge to you, uh, another two one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching calls. So to just answer your questions, you know, hand, some hand-holding, uh, help convert existing accounts to SAS, SAS mode because you might have some existing customers. Um, but maybe, uh, Sean, maybe just leave us here with a little bit about the Local Hero Playbook. Uh, I, that's been really exciting for folks. And they've got a white label video in there. What what can you tell oh, about is that? This part, you mean the SASpreneur course? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the yeah, local yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. So if you look at that, it's it's pretty cool. Um, essentially, uh, I think you can go to SAS. I don't know how you get it, James. I think university.gohighlevel.com. Go yeah, yeah. University.gohighlevel.com. Once you're on the 497 plan. Yeah, and so really, what we're doing here is we're walking you through and and showing you how to really become that SASpreneur and giving you a play by play by play by play on how to how to actually go out there do the prospecting obviously we have the prospecting tool for those of you who don't know about it um, and give you the opportunity to really learn how to be how to really run this model um, the other thing that we'll see here i mean the features are awesome but on the education side we're also going to create guides specific to each industry and to each type of business so let's say you run into a hair salon or a med spa or a barber shop it'll say how to set up a med spa how to set up a barber shop so it'll really try to make it super 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 easy to show you which features we think are the best to highlight for that particular type of business and to show you how to set it up. So ultimately, we'll continue to really push out both on the feature set side, but also on the education side. Love it, guys. So hopefully, guys, we all took some massive takeaways from this today. I know Sean's probably got lots more videos he needs to get back to and make. Appreciate your time. Uh, go high Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. That's, thank you. Uh, go high level.com slash James Hurst if you want to start a free trial if you're brand new to this. Uh, if you want to upgrade uh, with me and get and get some of uh, my help, then we can uh, definitely reach out. So uh, let's see. Any final thoughts? Let's see. I guess we'll be seeing you in October at the... Heck yeah. Level I cannot Summit. wait. It is going to be and, awesome. And by the way, search Go High Level 5-Day Challenge on Google because okay. our uh, because our websites get uh, get SEO just fine. <laughs> you'll find that you'll find that Google can find them. Um, so that, that somebody asked for that link from earlier. So that's that's how I would find it. Um, and then uh, uh, as James said, go to university.gohighlevel.com for that. Um, once you get to the 497 plan, um, it'll automatically be popped into your uh, to your memberships. Um, and then yeah, I'm just thinking, gosh. 
So we have this entire list of, if you haven't gotten tickets yet, by the way, it's levelup.gohighlevel.com, but here's the deal. We have this massive list of brand new features we're not telling anybody about, we're not talking about, but we'll all go live at Level Up Day. And the people at Level Up Day will get first crack at them. So ultimately our goal is to give those people a week to two weeks of first line access to all of the features that we announce. Um, and you'll only know about them if you're at the event. There's no replays, there's no digital subscriptions, no this, no that. That. It's a very compact event. It's very limited capacity. We're not interested in get making it any bigger because we want it to be just the elite of the elite. If you're interested in actually doing this, that is the event you want to go to. So again, it's levelup.gohighlevel.com to get your tickets. Um, and so hustle it up because I think we're getting real close to being done. And no, uh, no promises if you get the VIP ticket that you get to have dinner with Sean, but you might get the same table or, you know, so... It, it was well, I, will, I will be in the crowd just like everybody yeah. else. I will be, I will be there. I will be at every, I'll, I'll be at every place I possibly can. Yeah. VIP tickets for the record are sold out. So you can't even get them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you can still get an all access pass. So definitely check it out when you get a chance. And I can't wait to meet all of you. Um, I will certainly be there. I, I, uh, I'm going to be sitting in the crowd like everybody else listening to the speakers, which are amazing. Um, I can't wait to hear what they have to say. So I'll be there with all of you. Love it. Okay, guys, I'm going to let Sean get back to what he's doing. I'm going to stick around All and right. make sure I've addressed any other questions. But, Sean, we'll talk to you later. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, James. James. Bye, Bye, everybody. See ya. And I'm just going to stay here, guys, and uh, just make sure there's any other questions here. Let me check in with you. Is there an online stream? I don't think there is. Don't think there is an online stream. I think he there has been uh, recordings in the past. Um, I know I saw someone asking about how do we get the hero playbook. Also the one earlier from Sean. Okay, how do we get the hero playbook? So I have seen a lot of people actually. Uh, I've seen Chase Buckner. Um, asking people to DM them so with like their email address so he can get that added to their account. But when it is added, it's going to be university.gohighlevel.com. Okay. And then what other questions? Any links in the chat? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few links. I'll see if I can track those down. If anyone else can um, drop those links that were mentioned in the YouTube chat or the Facebook chat, that'd be great. Tyler, thank you so much. James has been my go-to resource for Hilo for the last year. Well worth joining with him. Thank you. And I think that's good. Can I switch my agency? So Ara asks, I just stumbled upon an affiliate. He hasn't really offered anything. Can I switch my agency to James? I don't think you can very easily, unfortunately. So... Uh, in some rare circumstances, you might be able to, uh, but thank you for asking. And Mark says, love the upgrade. Juanita says, I'm reaching out to my local Mexican restaurant. They need help. So I think that wraps us up, guys. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. If you are interested in the upgrade, definitely get a hold of me. Uh, you can drop a comment on YouTube or Facebook. Send me a DM, facebook.com slash OJ And with that being said, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.